crime prevention specialist in the community response unit. So let's welcome Dr. Swanson and she's gonna share with us ways and tips for prevent crime, crime prevention uh, during COVID-19 and forward. Thank you, Dr. Swanson, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's uh, in this challenging days, it's uh, nice to be able to get together and, and to discuss some things that we normally would do in person. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna cover a little bit today is a couple of topics that we've been seeing some interest in and some um, crime related issues being reported to us, as well as going beyond some of the things you might um, be aware of and need to be, uh, sometimes you already know about it and other times it's like, you know, I hadn't thought about that from that perspective. This is one of the things we're going around is um, with our deputy dogs, um, those that are signed up for and everything to arrest COVID-19 because of the you know, we all want to be safe and having our workers, ourselves be safe on the job. Uh, so this is part of our campaign to uh, do some of those things. I was gonna, let's talk about a little bit about the challenges because COVID-19 has brought many challenges as well as in law enforcement to every type of industry. And I was, I always like to keep up to date and I kind of look at current events all over and since I was raised on a farm in Kansas, this uh, came into my inbox, but a construction site that was, uh, they were building a university in Kansas, in one of the Kansas towns, uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, on April 20th, this was the headline, and it said they had seven cases reported. So I went through it, and I was looking to see what kind of things that they did to help um, mitigate it, but also the challenges are we can do everything we can but many times it's not enough or we can't, you know, be there 24 seven to say, hey, always wear your gloves or whatever it might be. So they did heavy duty disinfecting after a, a sixth worker had tested positive and that would happen to be the second deep cleaning they had done. And they required the workers to wear masks on the construction sites. But they said many times when they'd come and check, many of them didn't have their masks on. And I understand that because wearing masks when I go out, it's very hot, it's hard, especially if you have um, issues anyway. 42 to 70 hour period before they allowed the workers back after they cleaned, they did encourage their workers to clean their tools, especially if they're being shared among them. Uh, seven cases came from five different subcontractors that lived outside that city. So it wasn't people that were there, it was people coming in that were um, infected. And Department of Health, when they asked about compliance, they said they don't send people out to check for compliance, that they leave that up to the job supervisor. So the some of the challenges between in the building industry is that balance between keeping safe, not only with the COVID, but also security and keeping them employed, and being able to keep them on the job, but have to look at some of these other uh, challenges. We, tend to maybe be more prepared because we have hurricanes. So we always look for how we get prepared for hurricanes and we've been doing that for so many years, but this is kind of a different um, uh, scenario. So the two things we're gonna look at for crime awareness is taking away the opportunity. There are two areas that, as I've been working with businesses for many, many years, there's the online presence, with scams, with website security, remote workers, and then there's the on, on the job, where you have theft, robbery, burglary, those types of things. So you're always gonna have a victim, you're always have somebody that they're gonna be targeting, you're always gonna have a criminal, you're gonna have somebody that has a desire, and now we have more um, opportunities than we did before COVID-19. And so looking at what are the opportunities that we are giving the criminal to victimize us, and is there any that we can be more aware of in order to take that away? So I looked at unemployment as that is one of the challenges and one of the opportunities. Many people are getting laid off or furloughed, um, and so that is leading to some um, challenges there. So this was a 2019 study that looked at just a million laid off men and so it's a big study between 18 to 40, and they followed them for 15 years. And they found that unemployed people committed 60% more property crimes 
during that year after losing work. 20% had more criminal charges, and they also saw a dramatic increase in not only the property crimes like burglary, theft, but also violence. Many of you, I'm hoping that you have, have had training or you're going to be uh, looking at it. We've done so many, uh, myself, uh, many of it, uh, training for active shooter, violence on the job. If somebody all of a sudden brings a gun to work and starts shooting up the construction site or whatever. So looking at violence as well as property, but it suggests that there's a need to replace income, keeping a job, getting a job, but also because of job loss or being laid off, we have those psychological impacts where you're desperate to feed yourself and your family. You are not, you're depressed, you're anxious, all those things come into play too. So like I said, we wanna remove that opportunity. So here are some of the opportunities that we have right now with COVID-19, not only here in Lee County, but everywhere. School's out. So every summer, whenever school was out, we always checked and, and looked at uh, car burglaries usually. Kids are wandering around checking for doors. So now they're home. Many of them are staying at home, but a lot of them are, if their parents are working especially, are wandering around. Unoccupied homes. A lot of our seasonal workers went home early because of COVID-19. A lot of houses are being built now that there was a lull. Now more are being built that are unoccupied because they're not sold yet. Then we have the boredom that comes in with just being at home. I don't have anything to do. You know, I've been drinking. I'm, you know, I need a job. I need some money. Unemployment. And then you have remote workers. Many of the workers have never really worked from home. They haven't worked on a laptop. They haven't done their jobs at home. They've just been in the office. Maybe it's an office manager. It might be a secretary. It might be um, some type of a staff that never really goes home to work. But now they have the challenges of the security of being at home. So some of the prevention with the uh, first categories were looking at your security measures, at your uh, construction sites, at your building sites that maybe you really didn't have to look at, but now there's more people that might be out of jobs that are um, desperate and looking for tools, looking for materials, things like that. Being watchful of, the, of your sites as well as maybe involving neighbors. If it's in a community where there are occupied around you, maybe letting them know, hey, if you see somebody on the site over the weekend, there's not supposed to be anybody there, please call and let the sheriff's office come out or the police department if it's in their jurisdiction um, and check out who are you? Are you supposed to be here? Uh, same thing with being aware of the security scams. What, how do you recognize a scam that's coming in from email? We're gonna look at some of that. And then your readiness, be ready for these types of opportunities. Have contacts already in place of the sheriff's office, of neighbors if you need, or there's businesses next door, that if something's happening with you, you might need to let them know, or if do you have video, you know, this happened and I didn't want to know, did you have video of it? Having a checklist of crime prevention that you need to check after at the end of the day. You need to check, make sure the doors are locked. You need to check, these are the equipments brought in away from the perimeter of the site, things like that. Because many times we're ready to go home, we're busy, we're doing, we leave, we're gonna be planning to come back and we don't and we forget to, that we check that, that we lock that. With remote workers, unemployment, maybe pushing awareness training, making sure that you get out that information to them. There's a lot of uh, um, videos, there's online uh, training, there's uh, things through the Federal Trade Commission, how to recognize if you get an email. Phishing emails are up, skyrocketing to remote workers. Making sure that they're secure with their laptops. Do you leave your laptop to go and the kids get on there? Um, do you uh, shut your computer down? Do you have your stuff in the car? I don't know how many reports I took at uh, restaurants at lunchtime because employees would leave their laptops, leave their files in the car, and then they get broken into. So just kind of some of the things there to think about. So the first category, we're gonna look at scams and frauds, and then the last one will be the theft. These are the present numbers. I just looked at them this morning. They're being updated by Federal Trade Commission every day. Um, January 1st to the present, they've had over 23,000 COVID-19 related scam reports. And 
it went up to $17.97 million of victims have lost. And these are just related to COVID, such as, um, hey, click on this to get the latest update from the CDC. Um, Medicare is going to pay for testing. We've got the test, but you need to send us their information. So their top complaints that they were travel scams, getting out of town, uh, fake texts, online shopping, and imposters. And we're number two. So at least we're not number one, but we stay usually one or two every year for fraud and identity theft. So I, I threw in here um, a couple of the scams that are targeting remote workers. If you have any office workers that uh, do the pay the invoices, uh, take orders, make the orders uh, online or over the phone, one of the things we're seeing um, not us personally as much, but nationwide is those online sellers because all, a lot of companies are trying to buy, you know, masks and sanitary, sanitizing products and uh, health, -ish, health things for their workers. And you order it, but it never comes um, because it was a fake uh, company or they, it just never, they never received it. Or you get an invoice for uh, 1,500 hand sanitizers. And the person that usually gets the order is like, oh, yeah, that sounds, yeah, I know they were going to order some. So they just uh, pay it and don't check that. Is this, you know, did you order these hand sanitizers? Google is blocking over 18 million of these scam emails every day. And who knows how many is getting through. But they are along these same lines. So if you train your employees that do, um, do these types of orders, uh, do invoice, pay these, especially if they're working from home and they're not right there where they can go next door or pick up the phone as easily, check out that company who's the invoice is coming from or the order. Go online, Google, uh, other browsers with words like scam, review, complaint. And it'll pull up if this uh, it's been reported like that. And if you're unsure, you can always check with the attorney general's office. And have one employee, not like five of them that pay invoices, have one that recognizes, yeah, this is a vendor. This is, but have them always verify with one other person just in case, because a lot of them will change one letter or one number in the name and have the same logo. And so those were a, a few for that one. And then the other one that I wanted to um, relate is about the imposter emails, texts, and phone calls. We have those all the time, but now with COVID, um, you probably can't see the uh, screens there, but it's just skyrocketing the number of spear phishing attacks, meaning they are sending them to the financial person. They're sending it to uh, somebody in the company and pretending to be the CEO or pretending to be the HR manager with some training information about COVID. So if you get something that's from the IRS about the stimulus check or the CDC with an update or your bank saying, hey, IRS is going to put that right into your bank account, so we need to make sure it's correct. Make sure that you verify that first. Don't answer any phone calls if you don't recognize them. Let it go to voicemail, because many times if you answer them, they'll say, can you push one uh, for that? Yes, um, this is me, or push two, I want to cancel. And that's their way of getting your phone number and saying, yep, that's a good number. There's a real person here, so now you're going to get a million more. And don't click on any links or download attachments until you verify that it's actually. Go and see to the real website. Call the company directly from your car. Don't Google the company because there's a lot of fake websites out there. Um, those are the two that we're seeing such an increase in. So I'm giving you some examples here. This just was sent to me, uh, uh, not to me, but they shared it with me a couple days ago. Someone who came in contact with you tested positive or has shown symptoms for COVID-19 recommends you self-isolate, get tested, find out more here as the alert. Oh my goodness, who? And so you click on it without maybe thinking, wait a minute, that's a text, that's a link, I'm not supposed to, to click on it. So that's an example of one that's going around. This is a CDC imposter. Now the red arrows are showing you some of the things that's obvious because many of them have you know misspellings and grammar and things here it's coming from c uh, at cdc-gov.org so right there you can tell who has gov.org and then down here they have 
they didn't even uh, capitalize their name. So before you start clicking on links, think about it. Don't click on links. Let me go to the CDC website and find it. Uh, here's another example. Now this would be coming as if it was coming from you, you guys or from whoever your employer is. A note to all employees, and they'll probably have the person's name, even maybe their real email, because a lot of times they'll get it off the website. There'll be a picture of the CEO or contact us at this at, uh, email, and it'll go in there, but if, it's too long for me to read now, but if you will read, there's so many misspellings and grammar. We have, uh, there's an urgency. We need you to click on this right now because we are doing this in with our company, and then they have a link there for the survey. They need to know who's, you know, who's at, at risk. So be careful, make sure your employees know these are the types of emails that are going out. Now, just a few tips if you do have remote workers, whether they are contractors working from home, they are uh, office workers, you can go through these and make sure that they're up to date on things, the security on their laptops they're using, whether it's your workout laptop you've given them to use to take home or one they have at home. How do they use meeting uh, so that they're using it securely? One of the things too with COVID-19 now is there's distractions from work, remote working. You've got children running around maybe, you've got noise from neighbors, the phone ringing, you're up and down, you're leaving, you're coming back, your focus is off, you're doing meals. So you may forget where you were at or you left your thing up and now somebody's on there and, and, and clicking on an email that you shouldn't have clicked on and somebody else did or you're like, oh, did I do that? And so remember about distractions that as you come back from leaving, focus in again before you start, okay, did I shut my computer down? Has it got screensaver? Is it uh, locked down? I don't have my password written down sitting on top of my laptop so when somebody comes in, they can, they can see it. So just keep in mind of that. And then I put in here, these are some of the places that you can report it. You don't have to report it to all of these. These are just some of the ways that if you do want to file a complaint or you're not, you want to contact them, you can. So the second half of it is about burglary and theft. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we're seeing right now and some of the things we're hoping to keep at a minimum. Many of the criminals that usually uh, go to the building sites or are looking are the amateur ones, the opportunists, they're looking for an opportunity. Oh, I just saw the appliances go in. I checked the back door. It's unlocked. That's an opportunity. Um, they see in the neighborhood, maybe they're landscapers that got some day laborers and have not been, they see that the car's tools are left laying around while they go to lunch. So those are the, those opportunists. Then you have the insiders, which we've, I was just reading some of the reports. We've had a couple lately where it looks like maybe it's insiders or, or they think it's insiders because they just fired a contract, subcontract. Or they only took tile that they're using in the house, the other houses and not the tile that did not match and they were gonna throw away. Stuff like that. So it could be employees. Um, I was a deputy in Lehigh during um, the housing boom back in, when was it, 2003, six, nine, somewhere in the back in there. And every day we were taking reports of appliances taken, copper taken, ACs taken. And sometimes it would be, yeah, they didn't have the money for the second house. So a contractor came in and took all the fittings or all the paint to take it to the other place. And then you have the professional thieves that they're the ones that plan case places. They are the, uh, this is what they do for a living. So the most vulnerable time is, it seems, um, after the house is built and, but before it's occupied, because they know like the appliances are probably in now. They got a lot of other uh, desirable property that they can pawn or they can sell. So some of the things to maybe consider, one of the things I asked our sergeant, because we've had a couple clusters around Lee County where the appliances were taken um, from uh, three or four uh, houses that were um, almost to the finish stage, but had their CO. And they said, well, if, if we can be notified ahead of time that, hey, 
These are the addresses that we put appliances in. Can you please check them, keep them checked? I've seen already a couple emails from uh, deputies that have been checking a couple addresses that we were given by one of the builders and the rear sliders are unlocked, but the appliances are just sitting there. So things like that, that we could do a check and say, hey, we just noticed this, or hey, there's a broken window. Securing those windows and doors, and as you'll see, the sliders are the weak point. At the end of the shift, making sure you check, is everything locked up? Do the best that you can. And if you feel comfortable notifying neighbors that are around the area, hey, can you watch, just watch out for our um, site? And if you see something, are back in that shouldn't be or a truck or uh, can you report? We have the four D's of crime prevention. So look at your site, look at your building and see first, will our security, will our signs, our lights, the people, is this a, we have a lot of people around that's occupied houses that will maybe deter the criminal from, mm, no, I don't think I'm gonna hit that one because there's just too many uh, security around here. So they're going to go somewhere else. So that's the first one. Then the second is, can the crime be detected? Are there alarms on yet? Is there any cameras? Is there people around? Um, is, do they see patrols or people checking, um, making sure everything's good? Um, if somebody's kind of suspicious, calling, lights that come on so they're detected. And then delaying them getting in. We call it layers of security. If you can delay them even a few minutes and somebody's called or we maybe could get there quick enough somebody uh, to uh, catch them in the act. So that would be like having locks that they have to defeat. A fence, uh, equipment that's inside instead of outside, lights uh, that come on, stuff like that. And then denying access by a fence that can't even get in, strong locks, a guard on the scene. So those are the four things that we really looked at as crime prevention specialists to see how strong um, your uh, crime prevention is at your sites. So now we're gonna look at, these are some from 2019 and 20 from Lee County and I've kind of like generalized them. Um, so of what we've had, appliances. And you'll see there's some similarities. Over the work in, weekend during the summer, Many of them started off like that. This was over the weekend between Friday and Monday, and it happened during the summer. Probably because there's not that many people around regularly during 2019 uh, until everything started. We had, in this particular case, it was five residences. They already had their COs. The appliances were taken out of all five. There were no signs of marked forced entry, and they, they suspected the contractor who made the report that maybe realtors showing the property left it unlocked. So if that would be the case, every month I uh, teach personal safety to new members of the Royal Palm Coast um, uh, Realtor Association at Cape Coral and Winkler Avenue. Um, and we talk about, you know, personal safety. So if realtors are leaving unlocked, they need to be reminded too. make sure you secure when you leave. Uh, no cameras at a lot of them, no occupied houses in the area, which is not anything that you have any control over. But that's the ones that get targeted a lot because they say, oh, no one's around to see what I'm doing. This one, again, over the weekend during the summer, they had two houses that were entered through the rear sliding glass door. Now I noticed when I was reading through all these, almost every one of them was through the rear sliding glass door. That's the easiest one to pry open, and many of them were just unlocked. One, in this case, was forced. They pried the locking mechanism, probably with a crowbar or a screwdriver out, and the other was just left unlocked, and they think by a subcontractor. The interior door that leads into the garage, many times is left open, left unlocked, where in this case, it didn't have any handle or a lock, so that's always an easy entry in, too. The front door required a code, which is good, but in this case, and I don't know if this is the same overall uh, builders, but the code is the same for all the residents under construction of that company. So if it is an employee or an employee that gives the number out to somebody, now they're able to get it, use the code into all of them. 
the appliances were stolen. Now they did have a camera on the front door, but it wasn't working due to a dead battery. So how long had it been dead? That's something to check, making sure that they're working. They're not obstructed. They haven't been tampered with. Now this is one that they feel is an insider. The doors and windows are installed. The burglary happened over the weekend during the summer. They said they hadn't checked it between Friday and Monday. So maybe possibly it would help to somebody to check, make sure everything's good through the weekends. Uh, they had changed the passcode recently on the garage door. There were no signs of forced entry, but the company had fired a subcontractor recently and they thought they had received all the keys. So there may not have been a strict policy about making sure you did. Uh, canvas revealed, now a neighbor did see a man there who fit the description of the subcontractor that they fired, but they did not know that no one was supposed to be there. They said they just thought it was the workers working over the weekend. So if you know that no one's supposed to be there, then you may feel comfortable letting neighbors know. And even if it's a box truck, that's what we had in Lehigh, the most problem with. They saw box trucks or men around the, uh, a, the water system, a uh, box truck pulled in, they just figured it, it was a worker, but there was no sign on the truck. Um, if you have a sign telling them, hey, you know, all our companies, all our people have signs on their truck. So if you see something that's a car or whatever, um, so that's just one thing. This is another one. This was paint. We've had two so far now with paint stolen. Paint delivered to the house under construction. It was burglarized overnight. It was secured about 1.30 the night before or the day that day. Rear window and glass slider were standing open. There was pry damage to the rear slider and the neighbors did not see or hear anything because it was overnight. So um, it, a lot of things, it's not always appliances and we've had two now that would paint. So it could be another company, you know, somebody that's needing paint for another house. And then we don't wanna leave off equipment. We've had several skid steers, uh, skid steers, I think that's the name of it, the stolen that were parked next to the site. Um, this is a trailer. Many of the uh, sites at the beginning especially have a trailer, um, making sure that um, overnight, in this case, the trailer was broken into and tools stolen. Now they had locked it, but the padlock had been cut. So um, we always encourage if you have a tools to paint or write on there your name or the last board, you know, the last digits of your driver's license, something that will indicate that this is yours if it goes to the pawn shop. There is no lights, no fencing, no cameras um, on this uh, construction site. Several of the uh, thefts that we've had of the, in this have been tools and they even had the name painted on them, but they did pawn them. So uh, it's uh, sometimes when they go to pawn them, they pretend that's their name or that's their number on it. This one is a skid steer over the weekend, along with other, it was stored along the side. And the day before, this is, now to me, this is suspicious, but maybe, you know, I've been in law enforcement a long time. Uh, it said that several workers that were servicing the steer, skid steer were taking pictures of it from all sides and taking notes. So when they, the detective talked to the victim about it, he said, well, I thought it was kind of odd, but I didn't really ask them, what are you doing? So I'm not sure why they were doing that. Maybe they were the ones that came back and stole it later and they were looking to see, does it have, you know, how's the mechanism, what does it look like? So they did have a GPS tracker, but they tore it out and tossed it away. So these are some of the crime prevention suggestions to consider. Maybe assign someone, if you're from the start to the finish, that's the crime prevention coordinator. And they could assign, delegate that, hey, you're in charge of, at the beginning, at the end, checking your security. Is everything working? Is the locks not tampered with? Um, now you're all, you're in charge of a uh, safety check. You're in charge of doing that. Uh, reviewing your security plan, because as the beginning, you're gonna have materials, you're gonna have a trailer, but as it progresses, you're gonna start getting appliances, you're gonna start getting paint, you're gonna get other things. That keeping it well lit, those locking up, uh, securing the equipment, that type of thing. Limit the supplies that you can keep there. Try not to have it dropped off like on Friday and leave it all weekend for Monday. Um, I know there'll be 
times that you might have to, but that's when you really should, um, if you have to, put it where it's harder to get. Making sure you have good inventory and updated so that you'll know if something's been stolen. It's not like three weeks later, oh, you know what? I did have a, a dozer that was taken and I didn't realize it because we haven't used it. Uh, again, I'll reiterate, if you can, have builders notify us when appliances are delivered because that's one of the main things that are targeted. And if you can, and I know it may be overkill, the locks or something on the rear sliders, but at least locking them to try because that seems to be the entry that they're uh, heading for. So to end, I'm going to encourage you to, if you see something, say something. Let your employees know. Please let us check them out. You're not bothering us. There are many of them that have don't even, they said, oh yeah, uh, toolboxes, or we had a bunch of stuff stolen two weeks ago, but we didn't report it. The criminal went back and stole some more, and now they call to report it. If you call and let us know, even if you're not gonna press charges, at least we will know something's happening. We can increase patrol in that area. So any suspicious, somebody walking around, that type of thing. Just a little bit about us, our crew team. I'm part of the crime prevention specialists. We do programs on everything from active shooter to personal safety, self-defense classes, uh, things like I'm doing today. Community policing deputies, they work um, in the gated communities, the managed communities. Uh, they work with the HOAs and they handle like nuisance things, the dogs or trespassing in the fishing pond, you know, things like that. So they are the, for our first line of defense for uh, new um, uh, buildings going up into the managed communities. And then special enforcement teams, they're the ones that work a lot of the special ops for um, if we have some construction thefts in a certain area, they'll set up surveillance. They might even have a bait, um, something baited out there. They're going to have um, drugs. They're going to do the drug uh, takedowns and um, enforcement of that, and all those types of things. So some of the ways that we could work together is we offer security surveys of buildings and property, and that's a free service. Um, we can give any suggestions before it gets to completion or after, after it's occupied. We do a lot of, um, I do a lot, especially myself, I do a lot of uh, buildings of businesses, hospitals, medical facilities. Uh, build, I, I sit in the planning and zoning um, development uh, informals and provide some information, set information there. We offer training, like I said, a lot of active shooter training for people and other things. If you have any events that you'd like the sheriff's office to attend or um, speak at, um, feel free to let us know. Of course, during this time, we might not be out and about yet. But And then we have a biz watch. And basically, as our biz watch, we're asking you to watch out for each other. Um, if you have a meeting of business people coming together, we'd be glad to speak or attend doing area checks, alerts. If we have, like, the, the detectives will come to me and say, hey, in Central District, that's the district I oversee, in Central District, we're having, we had five houses broken into with the uh, appliances taken. I can put out an alert to the builders or to your um, association or whoever to say, hey, just let people know we're having an issue here. Our website, has a lot of information on it. You go to bureaus and programs up there and then go to business crime prevention um, and you'll find a whole bunch of um, resources there and you'll be getting the links to that afterwards. These are social media. Feel free to follow, like, and all that stuff. You'll get a lot of information. Our deputy dogs, we have that program. And we're encouraging people that walk their animals, um, especially to be alert to stuff. And then we have our app. If you've never, um, downloaded our app, please do so. First thing I do every morning is hit the tra traffic advisories when I'm out and about because it's up to date, real time, and it'll tell you where the crashes are and where to avoid. Um, it has uh, everything else on the that you can go in there and, and check alerts. You can check uh, arrests. Uh, any inc you can report incidents, different things like that. So I really appreciate you allowing me to present some of this information to help us stay safe, not only 
physically because of COVID-19, but also criminally. Um, I have a passion for crime prevention. And uh, when I speak at conferences, I always like to um, reiterate that we're in this together. It's not just us and it's not just you guys, uh, citizens, business people. We are, have to work together to, for our safety in the neighborhoods and in our businesses. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, uh, anybody have any questions, you can, there's a chat area, you can uh, answer, ask your questions to the chat and uh, we're glad to take any. Anybody have any questions? We are recording this, I believe, Emily, we are recording this. And so when we send out um, information about our next webinar, we'll usually include this as well. So if you wanna share it with your employees or uh, other, other businesses, uh, you can share it that way. And I put my contact information on there so that you can reach out if you do have something you need to know about or wanna be involved. Any other, any questions? I don't think there's anything's popped up. Well, Dr. Swanson, thank you very much for, for coming on today and, and sharing. You're welcome. We have a great relationship with the with the sheriff and the sheriff's office. Uh, Daryl Albishon serves on our board as mm -hmm. a liaison, so we have a, a great working relationship and the sheriff's been very supportive. So thanks again for all you do for our industry and we love that relationship. And uh, don't forget next week is LSI companies is going to be doing a real estate market overview from 12 to one. That's next Wednesday. Look for more information coming out soon on that. And uh, we'll let everybody get back to work. Thank you again, Dr. Swanson. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah, appreciate it.